I've been an amateur radio operator now for over eight years, and one of the things that I've realized is I don't really enjoy talking on the radio that much. I, I don't even talk on the phone that much. It's really the technology part of it that excites me. And just recently, the opportunity came up to host a two-meter repeater here at the house, and this I can definitely get excited about. So stay tuned because this is the first episode in a series in which we'll cover the installation, the configuration, and the operation of a two-meter amateur radio repeater. So let me give you the backstory on this project. A couple of friends of mine, yes, I did say friends, operated a two-meter repeater out at Ridgeport, Indiana, and it operated on 145-470. Now, that repeater was out there for about 20 years, and it was part of the W9 wind-linked repeater system. Now, I'm not going to cover the wind system on this video, but I'll put a link in the description below, and you can check that out later. To give you a better idea of where the repeater came from, I did a drone flight to gather some footage of the area. Now, Ridgeport was a great location to operate a repeater. At the tower site, the ground elevation is 811 feet, and as such, it's one of the highest points in the county where we live. Now, the tower itself stands at around 190 feet, so as you can see from the footage, the coverage area of the system was quite impressive. I had spoken to another ham operator from the Bedford area, which is about 30 miles away from Bloomfield, and he was able to easily hit that repeater from his location just outside of Bedford itself. In 2014, a friend of mine, who was actually the maintainer of the Ridgeport repeater, we paid a visit to the site just to check out the equipment, make sure it was in a good working state, and to look at the building to make sure there wasn't physically anything with the building that needed to be taken care of. When we arrived at the site, we looked at the equipment and it looked really good. It was clean and it was in good working order. Now we did notice that the door on the building needed some work, but other than that, even the building was in decent shape. Now that was eight years ago, and in the meantime, we've lost electrical power to that location, and the repeater's been off the air for the last few years. In April of 2022, we went back to the site. Oh yeah, we're intact. We're good. Our equipment wasn't in the best of shape, but most important, it was still there. With the site not being monitored, we were really afraid that someone might have stolen the equipment. But thankfully, that was not the case. And these pictures do tell the entire story. The building was practically coming down around the equipment. We were able to pull out the controller, the GE Master 2, the link radio, and the duplexers, but they were nasty. Now, once we got the equipment back to my place, it was time to get a better look at it. Now, I don't think this video or the pictures does this justice. There was literal crap all over this stuff. Now I started with the power supply, and as you can see, the inside of it really wasn't too bad. Now the exterior was dirty, so I started with cleaning the gunk from between the fins, but it really wasn't too horrible. There was some surface rust on the exterior, but by far the top of the power supply had the most rust on it. Now I addressed this by using a fine sanding block to get the bulk of the rust off and to take down any of the rough spots. I put a fresh coat of flat black on it before reassembling. Now, I know this didn't actually help anything other than making me feel better about how it looked. And this brings us to the duplexers. Now, these are at the bottom of the rack and took the brunt of stuff dripping and falling down from the top. Now, these are by far the worst and they were covered in mouse droppings and urine and just everything else. I spent several hours just wiping them down with disinfectant wipes and very carefully cleaning them off. The guys made it a point to tell me not to touch the screws on the top or get any liquid around it. So this is how they're tuned. And if you mess with those, you're probably gonna have to send them off to get retuned.
With the recovered equipment all cleaned up, it was time to find a place to install it. Now, I was thinking about downstairs in the garage. It's out of the weather, but it's not climate controlled, and it's not the cleanest location. I was really looking for something that was going to be clean and easy to work on when I needed to get to it. So I had this place upstairs that turned out to be the perfect location, and I was looking for something to do with the space anyway. So now with the location selected, I started to do what I do best, which is going overboard on a project. I have this unfinished section upstairs, and I've never come up with a good way to finish it. But these are sections just between the rafters, and the rafters are 24 inches on center. The opening on the left is just slightly smaller than that because I built a wall on the left side and that took up some of the space. Now the plan is to put the equipment in a wall mounted rack. Most of the equipment doesn't weigh much except for the power supply. I want the wall structure to be able to support this weight so I'm using 7 16 OSB on the face that I fastened to the rafters using 2 inch construction screws. And because I'm worried about the way this looks, I overlay the OSB with a quarter inch sanded birch plywood. Now the plywood is purely cosmetic. I fastened the plywood to the wall using finishing nails. I patched the nail holes and gave it a finish sanding. Now to finish it, I just rolled it with a coat of flat black paint. Now I had extra lumber laying around the house, two by fours, two by eights, two by tens. So I added those two inch boards behind everything that is screwed into the wall. That is just added there to ensure that everything is well supported. Now for the duplexers, at first I did consider just putting them on the floor, but that'd make it more difficult to clean around them, so I opted to build a shelf for them to set on. I built the shelf using 14 gauge framing strut that I skinned with 16 gauge metal that I also hit with a coat of flat black paint. Now as I was designing this, I noticed that because it extended out from the wall so far, it needed additional support. So I added two support rods to the shelf that I fabricated out of 5 8 inch all thread and 5 8 inch threaded bolt hooks. I picked up the rack off of Amazon. It's a Nave Point 12U rack. I've got a couple of these racks here at the house anyway, and they're sturdy, they're well made, and they're going to work well for this application too. The only thing that I wish I would have changed is the size of the rack. As I was planning on what kind of equipment to use here, the amplifier was not part of that original plan. It takes up 4U that I wasn't planning to give up. This took up all of the space in the front of the rack, and because of that, I had to pick up a couple of spacers and I was able to mount the surge protector in the back of the rack. I did have to go back and check to see the specifications of the rack just to verify how much weight it said it would support, and that was 130 pounds. But when I first installed the rack and I put the equipment in, the rack sloped down in the front a lot. So much so that I was a little bit concerned about how stable it was and a little concerned for the safety of the duplexers below it. Even though I was well below the stated maximum weight, I came back and installed these two quarter inch steel brackets for some added support. With the addition of these heavy metal brackets, I did go back and add some additional support in the wall so they would have something substantial to screw into. Now on the back side of the wall is where all the electrical magic will happen. Now, I've installed the battery back up here and I'll be doing most of the electrical connections back here as well. I've also put a PC back here that hopefully I'll be using to monitor the electrical system of the repeater. Now the plan is to put those statistics on the website at least I hope it'll be. So anyway, that, that's a topic for a later time. Finally, let's take a look at the equipment that I'm using to build this repeater. Now for our controller, I'm using the Arcom RC210. I purchased this specifically for the project. Now the Ridgeport repeater used an NHRC controller, which is no longer being made or supported. Now there are a couple local repeaters that use an ARCOM controller and my friends that are helping me out with this project have experience with it, so it was a logical choice. The radio I'm using for this project is a Kenwood NXR700. Now this is a used radio but was acquired for this project. The Ridgeport repeater used a GE Master 2 radio but if you remember it from earlier in the video, let's just say it's being retired. 
Next is the link radio. Now if we do end up linking this to the wind system, we'll be using this Motorola Radius GM300. Now the next piece is the amplifier. Now don't drag me over the coals for pronouncing this. I hope I get this right. The amplifier is a Crescend VVC100-5ROF. The power supply that will be providing our 12 volt power is the Astron RM-50M-BB. This model is capable of producing 37 continuous amps and has the battery backup circuit. I didn't draw this up in the nice animated graphic, but the last component I wanted to cover was the duplexer. Now we were able to salvage this unit from the Ridgeport site. It is a six cavity telewave duplexer. Well, that'll do it for this video. I've had a lot of fun with this project so far, and we've not even gotten to the good stuff yet. In the next video, we're going to talk about wiring the repeater and configuring the power systems. If you have any questions or comments about things that you've seen in this video, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And if you like the video, make sure you click that like button and subscribe to our channel. But for now, I'm Mike, KD9BLW73.